Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Deanna and you're watching Orchid. Recently, Jared and I went down for one night to the Gold Coast to visit his parents. And anyhow, a few years ago, Jenny, my mother-in-law, looked after my vandas and a few other potted plants for me while we went overseas. So I gifted her this Phalaenopsis, which was in flower at the time. Um, now on this recent visit, she's given it back to me for some maintenance. So she sort of handed it back to me and said, look, it looks really weird and things are kind of growing from places I don't think they should be growing. So anyhow, guys, if you are not familiar with whatever is going on here, this growth up here is known as a keiki. It is actually a little baby plant and you can see this one is actually in spike. So... Phalaenopsis orchids are monopodial orchids, which means they grow a single stem, um, unlike, say, the Oncidiums and Cattleya, which grow multiple pseudobulbs and are connected via a rhizome. So for these monopodial orchids, although they can still reproduce via pollination of their flowers, there's no easy way to propagate them like you would say a common house plant or even most sympodial orchids where you can just split them via the rhizome and separate them into multiple plants unless they decide to produce a keiki like this plant has personally i've never had my own phalaenopsis keiki grow I do have keikis on other monopodial plants like Vanders and my Doritas, which actually is technically reclassified as a Phalaenopsis. Anyway, some of these plants genetically just have a higher predisposition to produce keikis. Some sympodial orchids as well, like Dendrobiums and Epidendrums, produce keikis in abundance um, and in nature. Basically, a lot of these orchids are epiphytes, so they grow on trees. So when they grow these keikis, those roots that you can see will just grip onto a different part of the host tree. Now, some Phalaenopsis species are definitely a little bit more prone to keiki production. Some of them love to produce keikis, like the Phalaenopsis palins, or as I mentioned, the former Doritas, which um, are now Phalaenopsis. But keiki production can also be associated with signs of stress or damage to the stem. For example, if a Phalaenopsis has damage to its crown and it's not able to produce any more leaves, it'll often produce a keiki. So these baby plants can be produced technically from any growing point so they can be produced from the flower spike but also very commonly from the base of the mother plant which is known as a basil keiki so this phalaenopsis started growing a keiki soon after flowering i think two years ago and last year it actually flowered from both the mother plant and the keiki this year you can see it's only spiking from the keiki and the mother plant kind of doesn't look quite right it looks quite limp it's not grown any new leaves from the crown for a little while. Its bottom leaves kind of look like they're yellowing and a bit crinkled. So I believe this is because the plant is focusing all its energy on providing resources to the keiki. And now that this keiki is spiking, it's kind of draining the mother plant of all its energy reserves. Now you can see that the keiki has roots, but they're all aerial, which means they're just growing into the air, except for a couple that are digging into the medium there. Now when we look after potted orchids, obviously we're watering mainly into the pot, we're fertilizing into the pot. So those aerial roots aren't actually serving much of a purpose at the moment. So now for whatever reason, it does appear that this plant only wants to really support the keiki. I don't think that we can keep this plant connected because I'm pretty sure this mother plant will just die off. So this fowl is due for a repot anyway. It was one of my very first mini fowls that I got about four years ago and I last repotted it around May or April in 2018. So it's time for a repot. So because some of these little cakey roots are extending into the main pot, I'm going to remove the mother plant first from this pot and then we'll proceed to separate the keiki from the mother plant. So as I previously mentioned, because we've got roots going into the pot from the keiki, I'm going to try and preserve as many good roots as possible. So I'm just removing the stakes and we're going to unpot the mother plant 
If we didn't have this situation and all the Keiki's roots were free, you could just cut that flower spike at any point before this. But here I am just gently loosening the media by pressing around the plastic and then I'm going to remove as much media as possible just so I can free up those Keiki's roots. And once those roots are free, then I can cut that flower spike. It's a little bit of a mess, um, but it's important that I try and preserve as many roots as possible really. And the good thing about some of these roots that are already in the media is that they're not aerial roots anymore. They've actually grown into the media. So that will help this cakey transition into a potted setup more easily. So you may be able to see at this point as well, I've run some tap water through that root system and wetting the roots will just help it to um, be a little bit more flexible and pliable. And so there's less risk of breaking the roots and it'll just make this a little bit easier for me to untangle this mess without too much damage. So I'm just fast forwarding this. It's a little bit of a tedious process, but I'm just happy to take my time. And now these roots are free. I'm going to take some secateurs and cut this flower spike as close to the base as possible. And with one snip, it's just like cutting the umbilical cord. Mother and baby are separated now. So I'm also just going to cut off this old dried up flower spike at the base to make things easier to work with. But effectively we have two different plants that we're going to treat separately now. So first we're going to concentrate on the keiki and make this a little bit more of a manageable plant to work with by removing the flower spike. So there's a couple of different options here. You can either leave part of the flower spike on, but I prefer to try and remove the flower spike if I can and if it's easy to do this without damaging the plant. So usually there's a little bit of a pinching point between the base of the plant and the flower spike. So often this little pinching point is quite narrow and you can actually just twist the flower spike. I'm going to cut the flower spike a little bit closer to the plant here also just to make things easier to work with. And now I'm going to see if I can twist that little bit of spike off. If I can't do that easily, I'm not going to force things. Um, I can just leave that spike. It's not really a problem, but you can see that that actually has just removed really easily for me. As with any cut we make or any point of breakage, there's always a very small risk of introducing infections like bacteria or fungal elements into say an open wound. But I'm not too worried. Before I pot it up, I'm just going to put a little bit of cinnamon onto that open wound on the stem. And we're going to use a fairly airy mix anyway. So as long as that stem isn't kept too damp, there's not a huge risk of infection. Now you can see this little cakey actually has a fairly extensive root system and you can see the roots that I'm holding here um, are the ones that were in the pot. The main issue with aerial roots is that they're not always adapted to absorbing a lot of moisture, especially if they're not kept in humid environments or misted down regularly over a period of time. So when we're trying to pot that up, that makes it extremely difficult to work with because the roots end up being really stiff and inflexible and difficult to manipulate. So what I'm actually going to do with this root system is soak it. Um, so ideally I'd like to soak it overnight, but actually I suspect that Jenny has been misting down these roots because they are greening up a little bit. So I'm going to soak this for a few hours in a seaweed solution. So you can see here, I'm just going to put a little bit of sea salt, which is a seaweed solution into a bowl. And we're just going to place the cakey in there and let those roots absorb as much water as possible to make it easier to pot this plant up. You can just use water. The seaweed is an optional step, but I do like to use seaweed, especially after the repotting process to soak the orchids, but I'm going to use it at this step as well, just because the seaweed contains some hormones that helps to promote root growth. So effectively, it's going to help the plant transition into the potted media and decrease the risk of shock during that transplant process. 
So next we're just going to deal with the mother plant. Now I'm not going to dwell on the repotting process too much but basically this is just going to be like every other Phalaenopsis repotting and I do have quite a number of Phalaenopsis repotting videos that go into considerable depth regarding the media, how to sort out the root system, how to clean things up. So I'm going to link those Phalaenopsis repotting videos in the description below and I will put a link to my most recent Phalaenopsis repotting from just a few weeks ago up in the corner now. So if if you want to check them out please do so I'm just going to fast forward through this process so you guys can get a quick overview of what I'm doing and what roots we are left with on the mother plant. So we're going to pot up the keiki together. It's been soaking now for a few hours. I've already potted up the mother plant. So here it is um, and it's soaking in a seaweed solution as well. But I've actually gone with a slightly bigger pot uh, for the keiki. So it's going to go in a bigger pot than the mother plant because the root system's just better. But you can see that now that it's soaked the roots are green they're a lot more flexible they're going to be so much easier to work with even so i reckon it's going to be a little bit of a challenge getting all these roots into the pot and this flower spike is also being super awkward so usually flower spikes point upwards towards the light but because of the way the keiki was attached the flower spike is now pointing downward and it's at a really awkward angle to be potting at so we'll just be careful uh, so i'm going to use the slightly wider pot and we're going to line it with some liquor. I just like lining the pots with something airy so you can use these large bark or lava rock or something like that but especially for this plant um, I'm opting for slightly airier media than I normally would so I can't help it I have to put some sphagnum into the mix because in summer it's so hot here but I'm using a high proportion of large bark mix to my smaller one so this is a pre-mix of charcoal bark and perlite um, and it's probably going to be three quarters of that bark mix and a quarter sphagnum so now I have the fun job of trying to get all these roots into the pot without breaking them uh, it might be inevitable that I break one or two little bits here and there but we're just going to try and be as gentle as possible and just tuck the roots in. You can see the plant is sitting quite high at this point but one trick is to hold the plant and just to gently twist the pot and that will help the plant to sink down a little bit and get the stem a little bit closer to the base of the pot and so we're just going to take our time and we're going to gently tuck the roots as we try and spin the pot just to lower the root system in. So now I've kind of got the plant where I want it. You can see it's off center a bit which is really not a problem at all for a Phalaenopsis orchid because it only just has the one stem. Uh, but you can see that the base of the plant is flush with the top of the pot or just above and that's okay because as I mentioned I don't mind this keiki sitting a little bit high above the rest of the media. So now we're just going to go ahead and fill the pot with our sphagnum and bark mix. I'm just trying to maintain a good balance between a nice airy mixture to allow this plant to adapt with those aerial roots into a potted media but I still want some water retention so when the weather warms up because it will warm up quickly our winters just don't last that long uh, we still have some elements of water retention so the plant will still do well in summer. So there we go, the little keiki is all potted up, flower spike is still intact and I've kind of made a concerted effort to keep the stem above the medium so you can see it's potted higher just because I know that I don't want to bury the base and you can see that the media is quite airy and there's a little bit of sphagnum just scattered through the mix 
but there's no huge air gaps. I've maintained aeration mainly by using that large bark mix. And here is the finished product. Our mother and baby all potted up. You can see the babies in a bigger pot than the mother and that's fine. Uh, but the mother plant there, I'm pretty sure it's going to lose one or two leaves. So it's really normal for all plants after they're repotted to go through some element of transplant shock. The Phalaenopsis overall handle repottings pretty well, but you can see these leaves are kind of not doing well anyway, so it's very likely that the plant will resorb those leaves. But both these plants have now been soaking in a seaweed solution. As I mentioned before, this is a pretty routine step of my repottings. I soak all my repotted plants in a seaweed solution to try and minimize that transplant shock for whatever it's worth. Another thing I'm doing this winter is putting all my repotted plants onto seedling heat mats. So this will help also to protect the root systems from transplant shock by promoting heat and humidity around the root zone and hopefully that'll promote earlier root growth. So my hope for this keiki is that these roots transition from the air to the pot easily. So I'm hoping I don't lose too many, but it wouldn't surprise me if I lost one or two roots in there. But hopefully with those growing root tips and some of those roots already used to a potted media, it won't be too bad. And uh, I would expect within the month, if this orchid takes well, I should be seeing some active root growth. Hopefully that spike just continues to grow and I see some new leaves emerging as well. So for this plant, as I mentioned, I would expect it to probably lose a couple of leaves, but hopefully we'll start to see some new root growth there as well. And hopefully we'll see some new leaves finally emerging from the crown. Well everyone, that's it and I hope you enjoyed this cakey separation slash potting up video. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more orchid videos. Hope you guys have a great week and happy growing until I see you next time. Bye!